Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing great, even though we are having a tough times in the world right now. Um, super excited to be here. I know this is the last session of the of the day, so I hope you're still still awake. Um, first of all, thank you so much for IMEX for hosting this this amazing event. Uh, there are so many great uh, sessions and talented speakers, and I hope you have all learned a ton and you can take this home back home and like start delivering uh, based on based on the learnings um, but today uh, we're going to be discussing about virtual sponsorships and then over the past couple of weeks even a little bit more than a couple of weeks I've had tons of discussions with different event organizers all around the world and all of them seem to be a little bit asking like having difficulties that how do I monetize my events? What do I sell? What can I sell? And what, what do the sponsors get? So I hope this session will help you to understand and learn a bit what, what opportunities are out there. I feel there are so many. And let's, let's take a look at those. Um, so who am I? Uh, the the pre presenter. My name is uh, Ville Vanhala. And then... Um, uh, my background is actually with sponsorship sales. So um, I did that before we, we, we founded Brella back in 2016. So this, that's why this topic is like, I'm super passionate about it. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I'm also co-founder of Brella, which is a um, event platform for live, virtual and hybrid events. And the core is obviously uh, matchmaking, networking and sponsorships. And then a little bit more about me. Uh, I love uh, soccer, uh, ice fishing, and then buns. Um, and also, I have a, a little bit over 10 years of experience in the industry. Uh, even though some of you might be thinking that, hey, this guy looks pretty young. Uh, but that's because I'm born and raised in a freezer called Finland. So I don't age. All right, moving on. So today, now, uh, you will learn that uh, how virtual events translate into more conversions and tractions for sponsors. And then what, what are the relevant virtual sponsorship opportunities for your event? And, and then we discuss the, like the digital marketing budgets. And then what, what do they mean for you? But I want to start this presentation with good news. It's always good to start with good news, especially during this time. So... Uh, the good news is that 72% of the marketers will increase or shift their budgets. They're not cutting them during the COVID-19. And why this is good news is because these marketers are the people who are investing their money into your events. They're the sponsors. And then for, for, for you, it's important to know that the money is out there, but they're now thinking about where, where, where do they invest their, their money? Because like for marketers, marketer is marketing manager, CMO, marketing director. For them, the main goal, the K KPI, is to deliver marketing qualified leads for sales in every organization. Pretty simple. So from that, we can go into discussion that, so why do sponsors invest into events? Why do these marketers invest in events? And you might already guess, guess the answer, but I always want to start with why. Why? And then after that, we can build on what and how. So why do they invest? It's pretty simple. They invest because they need leads. And these leads are kind of, you, you, as an organizer, as an event organizer, you can de deliver leads in many different ways, but we can start with this. So why they want leads? Because leads will help them to grow their business. Simple. And how? So in the virtual landscape, there are many, many opportunities. So um, there are FaceTime with warm leads, meaningful exposure, data on our eyes. So like based on this, this, these are the elements that you can build your sponsorship prospectus, like virtual booth, one-to-one -one meetings, sponsor chat, uh, live stream, presentations, ads, branding, and then of course the data part. So who met whom, who attended sessions, while looking for the services. So like um, the last three things are pretty interesting because like in virtual, you can track so many things. So 
we are moving towards more data-driven world, uh, which is a little shift, but important shift, and it's going to be a good shift. Um, so why? Leads, what? Many opportunities. How? Because of you. So first of all, like without you, uh, this companies, organizations, the sponsors, marketers, they have, they don't have a lot of opportunities to generate leads. I mean, they do, but like not the way you can deliver them leads. That's why the events are growing so fast because that's, those are the best places to deliver leads. But also right now, because we're talking about virtual, uh, it's up to you to put together those virtual events. So um, we need those in order to attract smart people, decision makers, which will attract sponsors, which will get leads. So that's kind of the ecosystem there. Uh, but also, um, like in the traditional world before COVID, technology was more like supporting events. Now technology is the event. So you need to make the right decisions when you're choosing the right provider that who can deliver the best possible experience for you, for your sponsors, for your attendees, because that will help you to grow your business. A um, little bit about the marketing budgets. This is interesting topics because um, we quite often talk about, uh, like from the marketer point of view, so they have two different types of budgets. One budget is for events, one budget is for, uh, <laughs> for uh, digital marketing which can be social media, email marketing, whatever. But anyways, today, because we talk about virtual, these two different budgets are like kind of aligning a bit. And then the good thing is that organizations are already investing more money into, into online. And these marketers, they're having a lot of pressure right now that, okay, where should I invest my money? What is giving me the best possible return? Should I invest more in Google Ads or... I don't have the events anymore. What, what should I do? So kind of like the opportunities out there, the money is out there. Now we just have to execute. And then um, based on that, I want to kind of open up this kind of traditional digital marketing a bit before we jump on the virtual marketing or virtual sponsorship. So in the, in the digital um, if you are a marketer or if you're an organization, you have a pool of prospects all around the world. Like, hey, we want to talk to these and these companies, but they're all over the place. It's really hard to reach. They're all cold um, and you need to work a lot in order to make them hot. And when you work, um, then you can create opportunities. Opportunities are kind of the education phase. Somebody's interested in your your products or solutions, whatever it can be. But this takes time to take someone from cold to slightly warm. And whatever action it is, like social media, email, digital marketing, uh, the conversion rates are on average in the world like 2.1%. What means is that when you reach out to, let's say, 100 people or trying to reach out to 100, you, you get maybe two leads out of it. So the number is quite, quite low and you might invest a lot of money. You might be investing 30,000 into some project and this is what you will get out. Um, so this is a nice bridge to the sponsoring a virtual event. So obviously, you the organizer, you have done so much hard work to bring people together. The smaller approachable audience with the same intent, which is they're coming from the same interest, they are like, you no, know, they're coming from the same industry. They have interested the same teams and topics and maybe solutions. So that kind of critical mass is already there. So because the critical mass is already there, so the opportunity to get more out of it and more kind of warm leads is, is higher. And based on our study, uh, the number of leads is 20 to 30% on average. So it's so much more higher than uh, in the digital marketing activities. So this is good to remember when you're having these discussions and your sponsors are, or the marketers are deciding on where they should invest their money. Actually, your event might be the best possible option for them. And it most likely is. So uh, targeted audience, 
everybody under the same roof in virtual roof in a way and that will drive more leads in different forms we're going to talk about those forms forms in a bit and when we compare these funnels so it's clear that um, the virtual event sponsorship are delivering more leads better conversion rates and at the end of the day more return which is what they what they want the marketer will be really happy um, it's also good to understand like a difference between the at the attendee journey. Now we've been talking about the marketers, marketers world. So let's talk about the attendee journey. Uh, first at live events. So first they arrive at the venue. This is kind of the first touch point in a way. Maybe they've been to your website, but this is the real touch point. Um, the attendee navigates the venue. Maybe they find a booth, maybe they don't. They're walking around. They might find something interesting, but the reps are already busy with um, conversations with someone else they might pick a flyer the likelihood for that to convert into a high quality lead is not not that high um, then maybe they have a conversation somewhere they will scan their batch they leave the information the information needs to be added to CRM and oftentimes you can see that the booth have like join a competition or or something like that so those are the those are the leads so um, Yes, they are able to deliver leads, but the, the funnels are pretty one-way funnels. And what about in virtual? This changes a bit. Uh, so already the attendee journey starts for like weeks before the event starts. So they will enter into your virtual venue, which is the technology. They can easily browse the supplier list or the people list. Uh, they can find sponsors, of course, maybe they're not interested in the sponsor suppliers, that might be always the case. But when they arrive or when the event starts, obviously they are visiting sessions, some of the sessions might be sponsored, um, someone is paying money to be there to present their expertise. And that's already the first step that we can basically track who's been there and, or you can track who's been there. And then uh, that's already like marketing qualified lead. Uh, these people are slightly educated about about the sponsor or the supplier or maybe the attendee visits the virtual booth so there's also that opportunities to track who's been there what based on the interactions they've been doing at the booth and again create marketing qualified leads they there is awareness they just need a little bit more nurturing and then the third phase which is the warm called sales qualified leads so they will they can have one-on-one -on -one meetings on the on the on the platform at your virtual event and and these are the high quality super warm leads which the sponsor the marketer won't be able to deliver without your event um, so this is pretty amazing that the funnels there's so many different ways to deliver results and then when we combine like we discussed like traditional world, virtual world, digital marketing. So let's, let's do some comparison, like your event, the most amazing place, high relevant, hot audience, favorable environment, excellent for facilitating one-to-one -one meetings. That's the tradition, like that's why people love events because of those connections they can create, build trust, that's what you are good at. Then you have the digital marketing, which is powerful lead capture processes, optimized for conversion, simple and user-friendly processes. And when we combine these two together, boom, virtual events. And virtual events are these exclusive and focused marketplaces. Both buyers and suppliers are easy to approach, higher conversion rates to the ease of connections lead capture. They are there in the same place and favorable sales environment. So the opportunity is, is massive. It's just, it's just depending on the way we tell the story to people and like, the way we understand we can look at only the events yeah these are events but at the same time it's a little bit of digital marketing so combined we have to change the mindset a bit but we are ready um, so your event is this it's, it's a digital marketplace this is a like a traditionally events you have the booths but but in in the virtual people can easily find each other be in front of the people they really want to meet all the time for maybe a few weeks and then sponsors are always in the prime location in a way and they they buyers can reach out to them but they can also reach out to the buyer so 
it's really interactive and there's so much, so many things happening all the time. And of course, you are all, all the time being able to create these meaningful connections. So yes, event, but it's a digital market. We can call it a digital marketplace or ecosystem, whatever we want to call it. And how these marketplaces work, obviously, you have buyers, you have sellers, you have maybe job seekers, you have employers of offering a job, you have a startup, you have an investor, like this supply and demand, depending on the event you have. And uh, your event is creating this kind of cross-site network effects. So these two different groups are there in the same ecosystem. And when you are having, for example, a powerful matchmaking tool that will help you to create those connections and help you to be at the center of art, making those connections and deliver the value in the best possible form. And this is kind of like, in virtual, everything is, as I'm, I've mentioned a couple of times, everything is trackable, so it provides so much more, more opportunities. Um, and then also due to the matchmaking buyers are having or job seekers or whoever it is are having more meaningful conversations with the right kind of people and also the sellers are having more meaningful meetings with the right kind of buyers so everybody win uh, and then people will be really satisfied and especially the sellers if they have you know if they have even one good meeting at your event one good meeting can lead to a positive roi from your event and it will lead that they will come back to your event it's also good to remember so, so what are, what are the different channels? Like, um, cause like many times when I'm having conversations with event organizers, we are always discussing what can we provide? What we have this and this and that, which is good. You need to have what in terms of like sponsorship opportunities, but let's start with the why and the why is leads and what can we, what are the channels to deliver those leads? So obviously meaningful exposure, which means keynotes, virtual booths, ads, FaceTime with warm leads, so matchmaking, one-to-one -one meetings, and then provable ROI, so analytics and metrics. So kind of like the interesting part is that now in life or the traditional uh, physical event environment, it's sometimes hard for you, maybe it's hard for you to try to kind of know where, what people are doing there, like what kind of moves they are doing. And then in, in virtual, you, you have more, you can dive deeper beneath the actions what people are doing and that will help you to understand uh, how to improve your event or make it even more successful and tell the story that why this is the most best marketplace to invest your money. And this is the what, so why leads, then what? These are these different options that the, uh, the sponsors can have or what you can provide to your sponsors. So obviously like um, there are, different options which will at the end of the day lead lead to leads and then um like virtual meetings uh booth uh so how, how can you drive the people to to the sponsors and they can have those meaningful meaningful conversations and some of them are as i mentioned before marketing qualified leads so who's seeing my presentation, who's educated about my company, and then some is ed, uh, more sales qualified leads. So someone is already interested in having a discussion with me. And this is something you can all, all, all track, but it depends what the sponsor wants, how much money they have to invest. And you can, you can create the best possible experience for them, combining these different, different functionalities. And as, as, as we have discussed already that um, the sponsor success, how, how, how to measure, how to understand what is going on, it's really, really important. So like, let's start before the event starts. So, the, I mean, the different functionalities are one-to-one uh, -one meetings, who watch your presentation or keynote, uh, booth traffic engagement ads. So like, wow, your ads are working well. Mm, so before the event, mm, in virtual, it's important that people are active. And then they usually buy, the buy, buying process is this, that the marketer, the marketing manager, marketing director, CMO makes the decision that, hey, we want to invest into an event. Woohoo. Great. Then what happens? They will send out the sales reps to this event because they are maybe, they need to, that's, that's their job to sell. Uh, but 
maybe you have seen sometimes that these sponsor reps or the sales guys are maybe not the most active ones. Um, maybe they are, maybe they're not. But like kind of uh, in, the, in the technology you're using, you can see that, for example, two days before the event starts that this sponsor has only three meetings scheduled. So you can reach out to them saying that, hey, you have only three meetings scheduled, so you should do more activities. Or you can even reach out to the marketing director who made the investment that, hey, your sales reps are not like too active. So maybe we could remind them uh, because we want to make sure you get the most out of our event. Other sponsors are doing well. Uh, then after the event, so usually the sponsors are coming to you saying like, great event, thank you so much, but we don't know if we're going to invest next time. We didn't get so many leads. And you don't have, I mean, sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. You don't have the data on how did they actually do, so how to have the conversation with them. But now, because of virtual, you can see automatically, hey, by the way, good to have, it was so good to have this partnership with you. Great job. You scheduled 17 one-on-one -on -one meetings. How was the quality of these meetings? There were a lot of people watching your presentation. Wow, that's a good job. Seems to be really interesting. Also, the booth was quite engaging, the, all the content you had there. And the ads worked really well, so good job. Based on this, you, had, you were able to generate this many sales qualified leads and this many marketing qualified leads. How do you feel? So it's more tangible conversation than ever before. And then based on these metrics and analytics, um, it's easier for you to make them to buy again. Like, hey, wow, this was successful. Next year, probably you're going to have more meetings because you're more used to and people are more used to your brand. So would you want to buy again? They're like, let's go. Um, and then also, like, when you have more analytics and metrics about your event, you can create these averages that, okay, based on our events, the sponsors have usually this many meetings or the presentations have viewed this many times. So this will help you to become more, prof not professional, that's not the right word, strategic. A strategic partner. If you invest 20K, we can estimate that you will get this, this, this amount of results if you do this, this, this type of activities. So you can make it easier to buy your, 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 your events. And the summary of, of all this, I hope, I hope this has been useful, but like, I want to highlight that virtual means trackable. And, and then it's also easier to measure the success um, like in, in, in any, any different way. So like what, what, what is going on at your event in terms of the sponsors, how they're doing. And this is, this is the key for you to understand um, like how kind of successful your event has been. But also your event is like a digital marketplace. So like everybody are in the one, one place and it's a massive opportunity to lead, generate leads for sponsors. Um, and then the good news in the beginning is the good news in the last. So the sponsor budget have, haven't changed that much. They are just shifting them because there are not so many events right there. So now I, I, know, I know it's been an emotional roller coaster for all of us like because of the COVID-19. But now I, I encourage you to be brave and go out there and, and then try it out to do your first virtual events and learn because the opportunity is massive. And I, I, I strongly believe that uh, there is something big out there for us and we can create the, the, like this industry will be even more meaningful than it was before and you all will become even stronger than stronger than ever. It's just like now we are in this little pain but the pain will go away and then you have so many great technologies and then providers out there to support you. So we are right here together. We can do this and and then it just needs a little, little push. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And now it's, I, I guess the next step is to, if, I hope you have some questions and also let, let me know if we can help you in any way. We are, we are here for you. And then the last thing is that I want to hope that, I hope that everybody, every one of you are staying strong, as strong as you can, and then doing the best to bring people together. Thank you so much. Stephen wanted to know where the um, stat, where the reference was for the 72% of uh, budgets are going to be increasing earlier on. Yeah. Um, I've got questions about whether these 
platforms like Skype and FaceTime work in the UAE? There's, there's a bunch of questions here and if we had time, I could read them all out. Yeah, so uh, yeah, let's, let's continue for, let's say next five to 10 minutes. I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thank you so much for your time and, and hope, hope the presentation was useful for all of, all of you. Um, uh, I think there were questions about uh, the, uh, where the 72% came from. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the link. Uh, it was from the Business Wire, Wire article. So um, let me share that with all of you. So you get that information, you can check it out. Um, then let's see what else there were. So if you have any questions, just shoot me, shoot those questions to the chat. So I'll, I'll look forward to uh, answering those. So the reference to 20 to 30 leads, it's basically based on uh, what we have experienced uh, from, from our platform uh, with, with the sponsors who's been using that. Um, and yeah, for all of you, this presentation will be shared. It will be on demand, so you can watch it later. You can share it with your colleagues if you want to. And obviously you can reach out to me in LinkedIn, for example, if you want to ask any really specific question. Does your one video one-to-one -one meeting work in UA? Yes, it does. Um, yeah, I know there are some limitations with some platforms in some, some different regions, but uh, so far in UAE, we have had successful one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings. Um, would you propose the same rates for sponsorship packages live vers versus virtual meetings? That's a really good question. So um, I think like the big problem right now is that the sponsors are, or they don't, they don't basically see that what is a virtual event. Uh, but, and, and in this case, obviously, if you take a look at the big picture, so your cost is going down dramatically because you don't have to invest in venue or catering or stuff like that. So you can make more profits with smaller amount of uh, revenues. Um, so what we have seen so far in the industry that the, the rates are going down slightly, uh, but uh, this is kind of the, we are still in the exploration period that um, right now they're going down, but I believe that in, in uh, let's say in a couple of months, they're going, going back up where it, they were where, because then at that point, the sponsors have experienced that Wow, I can actually get as many leads as, as I was able to get from the live events even more. So the, the industry is shifting towards that direction. Um, then um, what are the, some creative sponsorship packages other than raffles, banners, speaking opportunities? Uh, that's a good question from uh, Marzi. Uh, so they can be, they can be many. Uh, I've seen some virtual swag bags, if, if that's something you can do. Um, I've seen um, also this um, kind of, uh, if, if you have a matchmaking platform, for example, so maybe the sponsor wants to uh, like invest in the matchmaking categories so you can build the matchmaking based on what the sponsors offer in terms of solutions and products, which will lead to a more high qualified leads for the sponsors. That's one thing. Um, Obviously, the presentations are uh, one one opportunity, um, and then we can we can we can talk about there's there's so so many ways what you can do for example with push notifications in virtual environment or what you can do with your virtual venue to make it engaging, and and bring people to to the sponsors. Uh, the Nick asked, what platforms you recommend for virtual vendor shows? Um, that's a good question. Uh, it, it, it all depends how many exhibitors you will have. If it's like exhibition heavy, you have hundreds of exhibitors. There is like the expo platform is pretty good for that. If it's smaller audience, or if you have like less uh, exhibitor sponsors, obviously like uh, Prella could be uh, really good. I mean, we can work with bigger ones as well. So I, I don't want to give it that much promotion, but like, yeah, we can work with any event sizes as well. Um, but there are many, many options. 
uh, you can shoot me an email ville at prela.io and happy to answer. Um, Austria is asking, did you work with oil and gas industry and those companies brands as a sponsor? Yes, we have some oil and gas that gas companies, um, but we haven't sponsored any obviously, but like we have some customers from that industry. Um, yeah, Nina asked, can I, can, can, can I help you to teach, uh, teach you how to do this sponsorship? So obviously, yes, definitely. So we built this elite sponsor program on our end and our goal is to help different event organizers to build their packages like the sponsorship prospectus in virtual world. So that's, that's definitely something we can even run a webinar about it. And if you are working with us, uh, we can help you with that. Um, and obviously it, it all starts like, what is your goal? What, what are you trying to reach? What industry you are at? And then, and start with the discovery and then discuss the execution in terms of the packages. But like always keep in mind that, okay, how do I deliver leads for my sponsors? How, and then going back to the technology, how it's measurable and so forth. Mm. Is there a way to pursue sponsors to attend in case they doubt whether there will be enough participants? Um, this is a question from Lu Luza. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, this is again going back to the conversation. So what, what is the, what, what the sponsor is looking for? What kind of audience they're looking to meet? And if you traditionally have that kind of audience at your events and you can show that, Hey, these people are coming already. So, um, you should kind of shift the conversation that, okay, what are your goals? What kind of people you want to meet? And based on that, you can have the discussion that we usually have this kind of people and based on our events, uh, you can get this and this many meetings with them. So of course it's, it's, it's always going back to the why, why they want to invest, what are they trying to get out of it? And if, if you have the right people for it, for them, let's give four, four more minutes. <laughs> Uh, um, Charis asked, what is the most enticing sponsor benefit that should be included in the packages? Um, obviously like the, some kind of virtual booth and you should make sure that the platform you're using is tracking the traffic that people are like maybe looking at the videos or some materials in the booth. So that's trackable, but then also like that it's easy to schedule one-to-one -one meetings with people. So the sponsor can go out there, know who are looking for their solutions and schedule meetings with them. That's, that's really beneficial. Um, um, I'm based out of, I'm in Finland right now. Um, it was snowing a bit a while ago, so it's freezing. Um, but we also have an office in New York in the, in the, in the US. So uh, we, have, we are divided in two different locations. Um, mm, 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 mm. yeah, um, let me see what, what else is there? So someone says like Ebba that, uh, the sponsor budget might be shrinking. Um, that's a good question. They might be shrinking. Obviously some of them, they do. It depends the company, obviously, but based on that study, uh, the business buyer study, it seems that none of them are cutting them so much. They're just shifting them away from events, the traditional events, maybe towards more to online events and maybe to more digital marketing activities. So that's something that now it's time to kind of show that there is the opportunity. If you can still attract the people you were able to attract before, and now you even have a chance to attract more people because virtual, it's super easy to access no matter where you are. So it gives also more opportunities for the sponsors. Um, mm, 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 mm. Steven asks that, uh, any best practice on avoiding giving away your data, but still providing ROI for sponsors. Um, good, good question. Obviously, um, it depends the technology you have. So how well the technology can deliver what the sponsors are looking for. So when you're making the decision, you need to evaluate it based on what is your value proposition for the sponsors. And then, um, so make sure 
if you can, that there would be like matchmaking, networking included so the sponsors can get those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And then of course the data, what you deliver to the sponsor, it's not about every attendee, it's about certain group which are interested in the sponsor solution. So it's a smaller group. Like in live events, you have lead generation options, like somebody's coming to the booth, scanning their batch. It's kind of imitating in the virtual environment as well. There's so many questions and it's so cool that there's so many people still online. So super excited. Um, mm -mm. Someone asked that, how do you approach the sponsors in this case, since budgets have decreased, would you be showing them the number of leads increased to the virtual events that you showed with tiers? That's one option. So like kind of showcase the opportunities, what, what, what you can deliver and help them to like the key is to help them to understand what they can get out of your event and what are the different channels for lead generation lead generation so if they're able to understand that it's easy for them to compare the let's say past experiences at live events to your virtual event and then obviously that's something we can also help you with um, Yeah, let's let's do one or two more questions and and I'll share my email address and you can add me in LinkedIn. So please go ahead and ask ask questions there. So I'm happy to answer. Um, there we go. There's one question from uh, Mahmoud. How can you make virtual events work in physical product machine industrial? So one one way is to build a booth that has opportunity to have like a catalog or carousel of different products so people can explore those different products and maybe there is a call to action already to kind of uh, I'm interested in this specifically so and and then this is one, one option you can do uh, there are many platforms for that do you think see even in the future of the opportunity of streaming I don't know probably uh, I, I believe so um, then Alicia, what about the post event coverage and visibility that sponsors may get, how this can be factored in? Um, so first of all, you need to have a platform which can track, uh, the interactions during the event. So when they have sessions, for example, that you will know exactly that who's been watching those sessions. Um, or maybe if you have a virtual booth, you can track who's been there. So one way is to discuss or give the sponsor the opportunity to kind of explore that this, this is the amount of leads you were able to deliver. But of course, you might have an option to go with the ongoing platform in a way that the content, the on-demand content will stay on the platform and people can even go after the event to take a look uh, what, I, what, I, what, I, what if, uh, what is the content from the sponsors and then the tracking keeps going on and you can deliver that or you can even set like a rule that hey we will give you the data let's say one week after the event this is this is the data what happened during the event this is the data that we were able to deliver after the event um a couple of more questions and then we then we wrap this up really Great that you are super engaged in this topic. Um, do you think the sponsors and the prospects are ready for virtual sponsorships? Really good question from Danielle. Um, are they ready? Yeah, they are, but they don't know. All of, most of them, don't, they don't know that they are ready because they don't know what, what they are buying. It's like going for the first time into a new restaurant. You don't know what it is and then it, it's if somebody has told you that it's, it's a great experience, then it will be, but same with virtual. So they might never experience. They are only thinking that it's the webinar thing. How can we get leads? But also the technology around this virtual events is getting better all the time. So, um, yes, I, I believe so. Every company needs to grow and growing it. If you want to grow, you need leads and virtual events are the best option right now, uh, to invest your money. Robin asked, have you seen any, anyone charging extra for more detailed analytics reporting? Yes, I have. 
great, a great question and definitely an opportunity. The more data you have, the more customized reporting you have, more value you create. Um, then Elizabeth asking, what do you think about opening the exhibi exhibition earlier than the scientific content that is streamed? Good opportunity for spoon. It is deluding the audience. I mean, that's something you can do. Maybe you have something pre-recorded or, uh, or maybe if you have a virtual booth, if this is sponsored content, so maybe the booth has already the availability to stream that content beforehand. So it doesn't have to be like the schedule. It can be just the on-demand content flowing on in the, in the platform. So definitely a good option to capture more, more data. Mm. But yeah, um, so I, I know that, <laughs> sorry, there were so many questions and I'm really excited about this. I know there's the next session, the DJ going on and the afterwards. So um, I think I will wrap up right here. So I'm gonna write my email in, in the thread. So if you want to ask questions, um, I will, I will uh, share that with you. Um, there we go. And then my name is Ville. One hala. So if you want to add me in LinkedIn, please do that and let's continue the conversation. And and then um, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.